Hello, hello. I am Missa. This is The Raven, Chapter 2. And last time we found ourselves caught, trapped in a wheelchair, strapped down after being chloroformed. We fought our way out. We defeated the doctor. We pass out again. We're woken up, found out the doctor had ran away. Someone left a confession note saying that the doctor was the raven, which for some reason the inspector and everyone else believes. We are now in Cairo, checking out the Eye of the Sphinx. We would like to protect it. No one else wants to, but we want to. And here we are with Miss Miller. So let us talk to her. There's also apparently a dog we should be finding. I don't know. Miss Miller, I'm glad to see you here. Oh, Constable Zellner. I heard what happened to you on board. Awful. Truly awful. Thank you. Well, that ends well. You are waiting for Professor Lucien? Mm-hmm. Miss Cruz, visitor, um, I don't know. Oh, Nile. I thought I said nice cruise. I'm like, that's not true. Tomorrow, you'll be sailing down the Nile, if I heard correctly. That's right. I'm sure it will be an amazing experience. But you don't seem to be very excited. Oh, but I am. It's very generous of Lady Westmacott to invite me, and especially Maddie. He'll learn a lot. But, yeah, where's Ron? Well, Professor Lucian offered to join us. Then Matt will learn even more. And I'm sure it won't be unpleasant for you, either. No, I... I just don't know how Maddie would react if Edgar came with us. I understand. I could Time to get over. the water to see how he'd feel about it. Would you do that? Oh, thank you, Constable Zellner. If you remember from last... from Chapter 1, you might recall that Zellner likes to butt into things. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure how this is any of our business whatsoever. But that's all right. I guess we'll do it. able to find out why Professor Lucien left the forecastle so suddenly last night. Guilty? No, not really. We only had a brief conversation. He was still very nervous. Because he's guilty. He on the train as well. Seems to be typical of him. It must be something to do with the burglary at the museum. It really affected him. But he told me not to worry about anything. He said, soon this would all be over. Really? How did he mean that? It's a good question. I... I didn't ask him, Constable. That's a really good question. It's gonna be over. What are you talking about, are Professor? Are passengers from the ship here? Oh, yes, we arrived as a group. David Kreutzer, the violinist, was with us. So oh, really? Miss Myers and Mr. Inch. He seems to have gotten over the death of the Baroness pretty quickly. He seems positively relaxed. I've met him. He looks on the bright side of life, so to speak. Where is Mr. Kreutzer? He's over in the treasure chamber. Maddie is downstairs in the main hall. I'm afraid I'll hear the sound of something priceless shattering any second. Matt will be careful, Miss Miller. I'll continue my tour of the museum. Oh, yes, there's so much to see. How do you know that boy will be careful? Stop saying stuff you don't know, Zellner. Making stuff up. Making stuff up. I don't want to go outside. Enter the guard room. Um, we actually probably will do that. We have no business doing that, but we'll do it anyway. Is that a harp going off? It's probably a lot. We'll, try, we'll find out. Sellers kind of nosy. He'll probably just go in there and be like, I belong in here. I'm a constable. Locked. All right. So you got your rear area and the main hall. Let us check out the main hall. Could you walk faster, Sonar? Please? Alright, Egyptian stuff everywhere. Which I suppose makes some sense. Okay, so we can go up wherever that is. What else can we do? Nothing over there. Examine this showcase. Examine these daggers. Alright, let's go around and examine stuff then. Examine this showcase. Ah, I've heard of this. Desert glass. In the great sand sea of the Libyan desert, there's a region where natural glass is found. 
Nobody knows how it formed. The valuable material was often used for jewelry in ancient Egypt. Wow, that seems like a very hot area. Anything else I can examine here? These statues with the light on them? Look like they're of, I don't know, a monkey or something, maybe? Let's check out these daggers. Several daggers in a row. The shapes and patterns look timeless, elegant. I'm not sure what a timeless dagger looks like. What does it say here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read out loud for the glass. The dagger on the left is a replica of the dagger from the tomb of Tutankhamun. It must have been incredibly precious during his lifetime because it's made of iron. Thousands of years before the Ice Age, meteorites were the only source of pure iron. So a star that fell from the sky, bringing a substance that's harder than anything they'd known before, would have been a dramatic event. No wonder they used it to forge a weapon for the godlike Pharaoh. That does make some sense, actually. Oh, I didn't realize Agatha was back there. Alright, let's look at these other things first, then we'll go talk to her. She probably has something insightful to say. Hmm. Aha. This shows how the ancient Egyptians were able to move the heavy blocks of stone to build their pyramids and temples. They used ropes, wooden sleds, and poles as levers. These exhibits aren't originals, of course. They're reconstructed based on old pictures. Nonetheless, it's impressive how they managed to build monuments like the pyramids with such simple tools. Sam and the figure. Check out the statue over here. This is Akhenaten, the only pharaoh whose portrait I always recognize. He has a very unusual head. Akhenaten was the husband of Nefertiti and the father of Tutankhamen, a famous family. But he went down in history as the pharaoh who wanted to eliminate the old gods and replace them with a single god. The priests took offense and he died of unknown causes. Yeah, unknown causes, okay. A figure of Imhotep who comes in peace. From around 2700 BC, the first polymath known by name, godfather of medicine, architect of the first pyramids, and according to legend, the inventor of Egyptian writing. He certainly achieved more than me in his life. He's also the bad guy in The Mummy with Brandon Fraser, which are movies I enjoy, but maybe nobody else did. He was a legend. The Greeks called him a god. The Romans still honored him 3,000 years after his death. Even today, scholars offer a drop of ink to Imhotep when they begin a new project. Really impressive. They do what? Got an achievement history fan for that, in case you're following on the achievements. Apparently you talk, or talk to, you click on all the things here until they don't click anymore. And that gets you an achievement. All right, let's talk to Lady Westmacott. Impressive, isn't it? Thousands of years old and still beautiful. That it is. They dug it out of the sand near Thebes over 50 years ago. I was there. Really? I met my husband there. He was an assistant on the dig and was ordered by the director of the excavation to take care of that writer. I financed many excavations in the following years here in Egypt and in the Near East. I visited my husband, together with our son. It was the best time of my life. But a museum is no place for nostalgia. What can I do for you? Um, let's see, we'll go back to the murder investigations later. Let's talk about our son. Your son? You haven't said much about him. Or perhaps you did, just not by name. You're an attentive listener, Mr. Zellner. I was wondering why you knew so much about Miss Miller's unhappy marriage. I stopped paying his bar tabs. Stopped paying reporters to hush things up. 
He got to know her and went with her to America to start a new life. You can change your name easily, but not who you really are. Hey, Ron. He has my eyes, doesn't he? The part two novel is for him, isn't it? If I couldn't provide Matthew with a good father, then at least I can provide him with a good start in life. Interesting. You've had a long and successful life, Lady Westmacott. What's that supposed to mean, Mr. Zellner? That I, I don't know. Ready to leave the stage? Because I'm not. Oh, I didn't want. I'm here because life is here, Constable. Or was. I have never lived as much as I have here. No fame, no money can buy that. I understand. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. Such an outburst isn't fitting for a woman of my age. And an English woman at that. Let's talk about something else. Yeah, if we could not call her old again, that'd be great. Will you attend the gala tonight, Lady Westmacott? But of course. Of course, yeah. The antiquities, the delightful atmosphere. And who knows, perhaps there will be another spectacular burglary. There will be. Your cruise. The ship doesn't leave until tomorrow. And believe me, I'd cancel the cruise for this. Yeah, the chance to see the Raven in action? Cancel the cruise too? Alright, let's talk about these murders. When I was working on the ship, I felt like one of the detectives in your novels. Don't flatter you yourself. See, it was an unusual murder. Most murders happen in the heat of the moment or are committed by idiots. They're uninspired. But Gebhardt thought it through. He could have succeeded. Hmm. I don't know. He made too many mistakes. He couldn't have known that the Baroness, almost unconscious from the drugs, would lock her cabin door. But that was a risk. The plan was too complicated and sloppily executed. You certainly are a harsh critic, Mr. Zellner. He could have shot her on the side deck and thrown the weapon into the sea. With no witnesses, no one would have suspected him. How boring. Or if it had to be a complicated plan, then he should have worked more carefully. Should have thought of everything, had a plan B in place. Maybe he didn't have enough time. He had only a few hours to plan and commit the murder. Still, he should have covered his tracks more carefully. The audio tape, the bloody glove, none of that should have stayed in the medical center. That's very true. I mean, on a cruise ship, you are in the ideal location to get rid of evidence. Just throw that mess overboard. I'm sure there was a window or something in his medical center. Open the thing up, toss it out, done. Like, what is your problem? Anyway, let's talk about the doctor. Do you think that Dr. Gebhardt was the raven? Hope not. Was. Do you think he's dead? No. Nope. That sounded like he committed suicide. There's your answer. Does that sound like the raven? Being unmasked? Taking the easy way out? Seriously, committed suicide? Yes, exactly. The raven wouldn't commit murder, get caught, and then jump into the sea? You don't want everything to be over, do you? It's my chance to do something great. It can't be over yet. At least you solved the murder of the Baroness. You're a hero. That's not how the newspapers see it. Nor I. Something's missing. I can achieve more. Careful, Constable. He who flies too close to the sun. Is that the myth of Icarus? To be honest, no. The story is Greek and was only written down a thousand years later. I was counting on the dramatic effect. Oh, nice. Worked well enough. So here's a thought from last episode. So the, somebody on the ship told the reporters that the raven was dead and, you know, the inspector did his thing, whatever he did. Was that the raven? Did the raven say that in order to get all the, you know, two things. One... Make everybody relax. Make the guards relax. You know, I'm sure they were on guard if they knew the first eye was stolen and they're now here with the second one. So relax them because the major threat is gone. Also, to bring more attention to the gala tonight so that the reporters would show up. Reporters show up 
And now the Raven has his grand reveal as being back by stealing the second eye right in front of everybody. It'll be amazing. So I suspect he will steal it before the gala. So they'll go to reveal the stone, you know, pull back the curtain or whatever, and it'll be missing. And everyone will take pictures, and it'll be a glorious thing. All right, that's my speculation. Let's keep going. Let's assume that the thief is still out there. Who is he? Inspector it Legrand. Novel, then it would be the one you least expect. Is that intended to be a confession, Lady Westmacott? I had to say, it's her. What do we know about the new raven? He's a man who would not a no. nothing. Must it be a man? And how do we know that it's just one person? There could be several people collectively pretending to be the Raven. So, we don't know anything. That's not completely true. We know that he or she wants the Eye of the Sphinx, and will probably strike here, assuming he or she hasn't already gone. It may be the end of the story for me, Lady Westmacott. Inspector Legrand will arrive soon and send me to the hotel. I return tonight for the gala, hoping all the while that the Raven does dare to attempt a burglary. Tomorrow morning, I'll have to return to Switzerland. What an unsatisfactory ending that would be. It wouldn't be a triumphant ending, but it could be worse. At least you'd still be alive, Constable. As always, it was an entertaining and enlightening chat, Lady Westmacott going to miss our little chats, Constable Zelna. Goodbye. Alright, let us now, can we talk to, talk to Matt? Ask him about the Professor, and if he wants, what's his name, Edgar? The statue is talking. The statue was talking? Squeeze me? Yes. And what did it say? It said it was... That's a very bad word. I know. And an English one. Don't you think it's odd that an old Egyptian statue speaks English? Don't you think it's odd that a statue speaks at all? That would have been my Thank next you, question. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so... I know we want to dismiss Ron Weasley for saying that the statue's talking, but... He was the one back on the train way back, remember? When he said he saw something moving past him, and there was something. There was a guy outside the train who went through the window and was stealing stuff, so we should listen. I mean, I'm sure this statue's not talking, but he probably did hear something from behind the wall or something. Is the statue talking Zellner, to you right stop. Now? Stop dismissing this child. No, of course not. Zellner, I just thought you're an you idiot. might have much better ears than me. Ears that can hear statues. Some cop you are, Mr. Zellner. This is a mystery, and you're just making jokes. Thank you, kid. You're right. It's just... Don't you believe me? Nope, he does not. I believe you, Ron. I believe you. Zellner psh, can bite me. Hmm. We both agree that a stone statue without a mouth or vocal cords cannot speak, right? Hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay. Good kid. That means you heard something else, and we have to find out what or who it was. Roger. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for believing the kid. I'm almost a bit envious of you. Going up the Nile on a ship, it must be great. Yeah, I guess. You don't sound so keen. I think my mom wants the professor to come too. What's wrong with that? You don't? Oh, come on, tell me. What if Mom marries the professor and doesn't work with the lady anymore? We'd have to move to London, and I'd have to go to a new school. Dude, that's your grandma. She's not leaving you. It's okay. Of course, I guess he doesn't know that. I told you don't like it. Did you... Oh, don't say that to the kid. Don't make him guilty. Ugh. Come on, now. Alright. I mean, I'll... Uh, he's a kid. He, of course he didn't think of about her. That's not what kids do. That's what parents do. All right, tell her you don't like it. could tell your mother that it's not okay with you. And she then she should ignore you because she's an adult. She... Mm, 
She should. Right. She's a parent. If I'm stubborn enough. She'll definitely oh, Lord. Professor Packet. Thanks. Ah, this we have to see. The eye is coming. That is not what I meant. That is not what I meant. I'm sorry. Miss Miller, I'm sorry. It's not what I meant. Is there any chance the eye's even in that safe? This will all be over soon. Then I'll finally have time for you. I, uh, Oh. We wanted to head back to the hotel. Certainly. And tonight at the gala, I'll show you around the museum, okay? And have you made up your mind about the cruise? Well... Oh, man. I don't really know. I only see you on vacation, Mom. And now you want the professor to come too? So I'll see you even less? You're right. I'm sorry, Professor Lucian. I think it's best if you don't join us. But Mary... Professor? Are you coming? Maybe... We can talk about this again tonight. Let your kids boss you around. Go back to the hotel. I want ice cream. Actually, Mr. Zellner still owes me some. That's true. Look, uh, man. I am not happy about any of that. Alright, so we can go outside, we can still examine this. Uh, let's go to the rear area. I'm not happy with our current outcome. That's okay. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. Let us look at the newspaper. Let's look at this display case, then we'll look at the newspaper. Ancient Egyptian jewelry. I like that golden signet ring with a scarab made of jasper. In ancient Egypt, these beetles were regarded as symbols of fertility. Nowadays, we just call them dung beetles. I suppose the beetles don't really care. Fair enough. Alright, newspaper? So we can get mad about Inspector Legrand? What? <laughs> what are you walking around like that for? read what it says, but the cover features a dashing picture of Legrand. It shows an energetic young man photographed from beneath, against the sky. That's the look of a man who can catch a thief and murderer in a single day. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Alright. Same with the banner. Exclusive and unique. The eyes of the Sphinx exhibited together for the first time ever. Hopefully the visitors will be satisfied with a single eye. Otherwise, all this effort will be for nothing. Should take that banner down. Anything else? Unfortunately, now it's just the eye of the Sphinx. But it's a bit too late to change the banner. Let's take it down. Be all right. Okay, anything else over here before we go into this treasure room? So we go in here, check it out. See what's going on. A great moment! Professor Lucien, your key, please. Uh, yes. Well... Did you lose your key? Come on, Professor. Oh, you did? Okay. You have to realize that... Uh, Thank you. That what? Finally! But... But... Uh, um, Professor? I, uh... I wanted to give you this. Oh! I... Well... After the burglary in London, I thought the eye might not be safe on its way to Egypt. So I secretly took it when I was what? supposed to place it in the safe in London. How oh, dare you. I felt that I should leave the jewel to someone I trusted completely. No wonder he was nervous. But the jewel was safe. From London to here, no one had an opportunity to steal it. I beg your pardon, my dear colleague. But if that were true, I wouldn't have had it. Congratulations, Professor Lucien. 
You fooled everyone, it seems. The honor is yours. Yeah, that works for me. Explains why he was so nervous. He had a priceless jewel in his pocket the whole time. Well, that's that. Shall I explain the security system to you, Inspector? The French ambassador summoned me. I have to get in touch with him. The press is besieging the embassy, and I have to answer their questions. But you absolutely must come tonight. The opening of the exhibition will be the highlight of the year, and you are my special guest. I will see what I can do. Zelna, will you have a look at the security precautions? We'll see each other tonight. Of course, but... Wait, Inspector. I'll join you. Well, here we are. The Inspector will answer the reporter's questions for the next few hours, and I... Well... I won't take up too much of your time. I'll take a look around and then go lie down so that I'm ready for tonight. Alright, I think that's a good place to stop for now. We went and talked to Matt. We ruined Miss Miller's cruise. Sorry about that, Miss Miller. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. We have the Eye of the Sphinx here that we will check out next time. We will check out the security system with our cameras everywhere. And maybe we can go to the gala. We will see. We will see. Anyway. I am Missa. This has been the Raven. Eye of the Sphinx. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.